Hello guys and welcome back. So uh, one thing I think uh, that I can uh, talk about after this, after, after this little bot, uh, this little metal button, right, is we can also alter our own material. Um, so if you want to grab uh, a material and just use it and you can quickly block out and you can quickly make a very decent looking, uh, you know, material for your uh, object, for your model. Uh, and there are some really cool places you can go to Substance Shar, right? And here you can also grab a whole lot of already made um, materials. You have to log in. Um, uh, forget my password. <laughs> Maybe oh, I know why. This should be it. So you can search for like leather and you can look uh, you can look through all the leathers that people make so they have a huge library and you could do almost anything without having to make any anything from scratch okay so like this uh for example this padded cushion right if i want to make that uh, there's you know they already have this or this dotted cushion whatever okay so you can just grab a lot of things from the internet and use it. But you have to, you ought to know that some other people might be also using these guys. So maybe it would be better if you can make your own and uh, uh, and then you have the flexibility of making it all unique and you can do whatever change you want to the, the shape you're making, right? Uh, so here back to Substance Designer and let's talk about just how we can make one, right? And you don't have to be an expert of this. Uh, Substance Designer is more like a tool uh, for like technical uh, artists who do like uh, material authoring. Okay, so this is pretty technical actually, but you can do a lot of cool things with it. And I think every artist, including character artists, uh, you know, can benefit from it. So that's why I urge you or encourage you to, to try, right, to, to learn this new tool uh, to help enhance your workflow and make your stuff look better. So I'm going to go uh, right click here and new substance and we can go for physically based and call this a uh, paddled cushion. Okay. All right. And I can go to go here and just create a transformation 2D node. And connect that to the hat and then create a normal node connect the transformation 2d to the normal and that goes to the normal basically the same setup setup i was doing earlier uh, and i need to control c control v to copy paste the hat for this hat let's double click on it and change the usage to ao ambient occlusion red mouse drag it over here and say ambient occlusion we can also change the identifier to AO and the label to AO. Okay, cool. And then for the others, we can create uniform colors to define them uh, for now. So the base color will be maybe a red color for the base color. Control C, Control V to copy paste. I'm going to change it to grayscale and that's going to be the roughness. Actually, that, that's not grayscale, control Z to go back. So this one, double click, grayscale, right? Go to the roughness, control C, control V. For the metallic, it's gonna be now non-metallic, so black. All right, now let me create a shape node. Actually, we can uh, right click and say leather, and there's a bunch of leather normals, okay? And we can, or the leather hat map, we can click and link it, okay, you can see um you know this one is actually yeah this one is black uh, let me add leather this one link resource yeah that's actually a leather texture and we can connect that to the transformation 2d uh we can also make it grayscale okay actually so that well, now we have like a leather base to work with right um i can then also go to the um, transformation 2d here or just add an add a new transformation to the we can divide it or times by two to scale it up right i don't need to be super like small 
maybe half of that yeah all right cool uh double click on the normal right hand crank up the intensity to make it more visible okay yeah uh in the if you search for leather i was searching it earlier right um you can see there's a bunch of leathers also and you can try to use them and there is also a bunch of leather normals okay uh, so we can also steal the leather normal here and link it and maybe that's more accurate so what we do is what we would do here is we uh, do a normal leather normal to actually normal to height high high quality connect that okay uh, the hat is bumping up too much so let's go to material default and go to edit and we can change the scale to tell it how much it's supposed to be uh, bumping out right over here okay anyway so we have a bunch of uh, leather pattern created already by using some already existing asset right so that's how it looks like when it's big so uh, I want to create this paddled cushion shape um, so in the patterns there are a bunch of different already built patterns that we can steal okay um, or we can also build our own mm, I'm thinking maybe let's just build everything ourselves so now grab a tile sampler here actually just right I hit tab and then tile sampler okay and then I double click on the tile sampler I'm gonna change it to X and Y maybe just 4x4 four four. okay pardon square is fun I'm gonna change the gold screw up down to the rotation make it 45 degree uh, so you can drag it and hold it on shift right and you go to offset to offset it 45 degrees okay offset uh, 0.5 okay and then also uh, we can change the scale so underneath the size we can make them a bit bigger and we can then drag the scale you know what that's it's actually scaling them this way so I want to actually make them scale in the other way uh, okay so I kind of need a part input then so let me create a shape node and I'm gonna rotate 45 degree here and do a transformation to uh, uh, scale it down right and that goes to the part to the pattern input one and I'm gonna change the pattern to pattern input. Okay. And then we don't rotate it anymore <laughs> because it's already rotated out there. Okay. Alright, now I can go change the scale to make it big and lower down the scale X. Alright, so it's like I'm trying to mimic what the paddle cushion would have. And I can crank up the scale. until I get something like thin enough okay all right so I'm not gonna create those super but uh, super um, uh, fat like padded cushion I want them to be thin right um, so what I can do is I can just create something like this I can do let me actually make it just a bit bigger okay and I can do a bevel after them And I can bevel, change the distance to bevel inwards. Okay, that's probably a little bit too much. Um, and maybe just a little bit of that. Uh, you can hover the cursor here and use uh, actually holding down left mouse button and use the uh, the middle mouse wheel to tweak it maybe a bevel in 
anyway. I'll do a blur. I'm gonna do a blur uh, high quality grayscale after this. Okay, it'll give me a blurry results. And then I can do a auto level to get the full spectrum out. You can see what I'm getting here. Okay. And then I can tweak the bevel of the blur amount. Maybe I can blur it a little bit more. A little bit, a little bit more. And uh, here I don't like those really dark dot. Yeah, I don't think I like that either. So maybe I'm just not blurring it that much. Okay. Um, and if I want to fill that, I think I can create a uniform color here and make it grayscale and do a 0.5. And then I can do a blend. And I can do like a, uh, a the, the max one so that I'm filling that with a square shape. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I have I have my leather pattern. I have my leather paddled cushion shape. Right. And I, then I can do like a blend to blend those two things together and connect that to the final result. Okay, the blending mode this time will be a multiply. Okay, so we're having that multiplied on top and we can lower down the opacity, right? So that it's, it's not that strong. Just a little bit of a leather noise and just then have the, uh, the, the part actually uh, be the dominant one. All right, I want to give it some wobble. Um, so to do that, let me just grab all these guys, drag them backwards. I can create a purling noise, not 3D, just 2D purling noise. Okay. All right, and scale this guy down to maybe two. Actually, that's too small, uh, five. All right, and we can do a blend to blend those two things together. This goes to the top, this goes to the bottom, and result goes to there. Okay. And here I want to actually reverse those connections. You can see the format is linear 16-bit. This is 8-bit. Uh, so if you use 8-bit here, it's gonna change that to 8-bit. So I have to swap those two things. So here also you can double click change the output format to absolutely 16-bit. Okay, that should make it behave a little bit better. So now in this, in this blend, I'm gonna change it to a multiply here. So we're having some up and downs in here and I can lower down the opacity right, to just have it bend a little bit. Probably noise, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's the only thing we can do, but maybe just to make it not that dramatic, I think I see some dark color here. If I crank that up. The normal is doing fine. Maybe it's just the AO is having too much. Yeah, we're using AO as the uh, hat, use the hat as the AO. Of course, that's going to be wrong. So I'm going to create an a ambient occlusion node over here. Right, because that's actually what we need to really mimic ambient occlusion. All right, that feels better. So we can then go back to the to the blend. Okay, and then we can say, how about I double click on the pearly noise and just scale it up to have a few more variation. You can see we have a, a little bit more wobble happening, right? Okay, that makes it that much more interesting to, to look at. All right. I want to have stitches in the middle, uh, in, in the valley. Okay, so I think what I can do is I can utilize the lines I have here. Right, this is the lens, I just need to create dotted lines out of it. Create a transformation 2D here. Okay, to have a like 
just to have a rewrite, right? To have a, a, a copy of that, copy of that, and then I can do like an invert grayscale to invert it. Okay, and then I just need to cut some lines out, out of it. So I think what I can do is do another transformation to D, and just maybe I can just have some repeated repeated lines here so let me control c control v to copy paste okay and then i can do like crank up the x and y amount or i can do this actually do a transformation to the and i just go ahead and repeat it so i can do divide by two twice okay and then i can do another blend on this guy and this guy let's see what we got here do a multiplication here. Uh, yeah. So we're cutting it. But we're, we are cutting it. <laughs> but uh, I think the, the, the gap here should be bigger. So I'm going to change the scale to make it smaller. Let's see what we have here. You can see we have those uh, dotted lines, right? And that can be added as uh, extra hat map on top. Okay. So we do another blend and we can add that to the very end this guy plus that guy results goes to there and we use uh, the max leaden so we have those uh, little dots and we can lower down the opacity to make them not super strong okay all right and also here I think what I can do is make the gap just a bit smaller by cranking up the size okay and eventually uh, I want to I want the color to be also different there right so the color instead of using red I can use a blend to blend red with another uniform color here and then we can change it to white Okay, and what I want to achieve is I want to use this guy as a mask to blend those two, so that now the the, the stitches are gonna be, you know, the white, and maybe not completely white, right? So some grayish color. Okay, All right, and then we can maybe. So uh, blur this a little bit. High quality grayscale, because I don't want it to be that square-like, right? That doesn't feel right. So I'm gonna change it to blur it a little bit to make it look more like a uh, a stitch. Right, as you can see, the power of Substance Designer is just limitless, limitless, right? It's just so fun to play with. And you can quickly create some material like this uh, really quickly. We can change the scene to a rounded cylinder and take a look at that. Okay, or a sphere 2 tile. Okay. Right. So to further you know what, I think that's enough. <laughs> if I wanted to, I can add some color variation also, right? So instead of having this, maybe I can have uh, like a cloud and whatever. But anyway, what I'm trying to show you here in this 20 minutes is that invest some time in Substance Designer, you'll see how powerful it is and how useful it can be, not just for environmental artists, but for anyone who does computer graphics. Uh, I think it can have a lot of uh, possible usage okay anyway so that's gonna be how you make a, a material here right and let's see how we can actually bring this back to substance painter and to use that on our model okay uh, oh you know what there's one thing I forget to define properly which is the roughness <laughs> okay uh, this is real quick right so I think the roughness can be defined with two colors
right? And uh, this is grayscale. And do a blend. And we can use our hat to blend those two colors. And connect that. Okay. So this one, I can make it super. So I'm, I think I'm defining the high ground. Actually, that's this is the high ground, and it can be a little bit more shinier. The low ground can be actually not as shiny. And we can do a histogram scan, and we can drag the position up, and then contrast up. Maybe without the wobble. So it's just that. So that way you can see what I'm trying to do is make the high ground more shiny and low ground not as shiny. So that's going to make it look just that much more interesting. But maybe that's too exaggerated. So I'm going to try to uh, lower down this guy. All right, cool. So that's going to be this leather uh, material. Uh, yeah, that's enough. So let's move on to the next video and show you how we can bring this back to Substance Painter. Okay, see you next time.